Beast Tamer is a class that can communicate with animals. They can literally use their powers as their own. However, Beast Tamers aren't that much in combat. For this specific reason, the Beast Tamer, Rain, is fired from the team by a unanimous decision from his comrades. Incredulous of what's happening, Rain looks at Arios, Agath, Lian, and Mina and waits for them to laugh it off. But this is no prank. It's real. Seeing that he doesn't do much in lethal attacks, his comrades deem him useless and therefore decide to let him go in for good. As Rain hands over his gear and walks out, his comrades mock him for being a mere beast tamer that does nothing but tame beasts. With nothing to do and nowhere to go, Rain sits on a bench and thinks what he'll do next. Three kids approach and have him tame them a flying bird. The bird stuns the kids and shows respect before it flies away. The three look up to Rain and commend him for being kind, telling him he's different from his comrades who are mean to commoners like them. When they tell him they want to be beast tamers like him, a new idea strikes Rain's mind who then decides to become an adventurer. At the Adventurer's Guild, Natalie, the receptionist, immediately takes a liking to Rain, explaining to him about being an adventurer and giving him his new gear. Of course, the adventurer's ranks are from S to F. In order for Rain to become an adventurer, he undergoes a trial where he has to gather 20 medicinal herbs and kill goblins. After getting the job done, Rain finds a D-ranked killer tiger looming over a beast skin girl. Rain tries killing the tiger, but his knife breaks easily against the tiger's skin. Before the tiger can kill him, the girl finishes off the tiger with one mind-blowing kick to the back of its head. The girl's name is Kanade. As it turned out, she was bored of her life in the forest, so she decides to go on a journey, during which she ran into the tiger and, of course, into Rain. After Rain tells her everything, Kanade tells him he's a remarkable beast tamer, so she asks him to tame her, to which Rain agrees since he wants to know Kanade better. Rain then successfully bonds with Kanade, marking the beginning of an eventful adventure. Rain was kicked out of the hero's squad for being a beast tamer, but now he has something much better going on. Now that Rain passed the trial, he is now an F-rank adventurer. A man approaches and antagonizes Rain for being a beast tamer. Afterward, the man challenges him to a wrestling match, in which Rain overpowers the man in the first fraction of a second. It turns out that Rain acquired superhuman powers after bonding with Kanade. During their first job as partners, Rain and Kanade find a group of bandits trying to mug a helpless old merchant. Rain and Kanade rush to his rescue and overpower them all, saving the old man's life. The old man thanks them and tells them to clear out since there are more of them hiding nearby. Once the rest find out what happened to their fellow bandits, they might attack the town and the merchant. After locating the bandits' hideout, Rain has Kanade get some help from town while he handles the bandits. Rain tames a swarm of bees and has them neutralize all of the bandits in their own hideout. Just then, Kanade returns with backup. While the bandits are taken prisoners, giant lizard monsters break out and start attacking. But thanks to Rain's and Kanade's impeccable teamwork, the lizards are defeated easily. Rain becomes a celebrated hero, as he tells Kanade that with her he's almost limitless. After taking down that gang of bandits, Rain was promoted to an E rank and was given a sizable reward. The duo book a room afterwards. Having some qualms about sleeping in the same room with a girl, Rain decides to find another room, but is dissuaded from doing so, not being able to resist Kanade's loving nature. A week has passed. Everything is going splendidly well for the two until they're informed of a dragon picking fights with anyone trying to cross the stride bridge. Seeing the sizable reward, Rain accepts the job. On the bridge, the dragon spots them and turns into a girl, stunning the duo. The girl's name is Tania. Like Kanade, she's an ultimate species and she uses the bridge for training. In order to cross the bridge, the two will have to beat her in a fight. After Tania burns her tail, Kanid dashes into Tania and starts a fist fight. As soon as Rain tries to kick in, Tania overpowers the two and sends them flying. Rain comes up with a plan. After Kanid keeps her busy, Rain has a flock of birds he's just tamed attack her. The birds are poisonous. Tania falls to the ground and admits defeat since she can't lift a finger. Rain takes her back to town and reports to Natalie about the job, as he also makes sure to keep Tania's identity secret. Liking being around Rain, Tania decides to tag along with the two. Rain doesn't mind as he bonds with her and becomes her master. On their first job as a trio, they hunt F-ranked slimes. Any adventurer can beat slimes. Sometimes adventurers don't bother at all and pass by. Slimes ravage farms which is why they need to be taken down. In order to find more slimes, Rain puts part of his soul in a bird and starts searching. After finding a huge number of slimes in the forest, Rain incinerates them all with a fireball attack thanks to his bond with Tania. Following their mission, the trio hangs out. At night, Rain tells them about his childhood and how he practiced taming beasts all day. One day, he returned home to find his whole village engulfed in flames. Rain was the only survivor. Years later, he was recruited by Arios. Looking back at his time with Arios' squad, Rain thinks Arios was just using him, which sounds pathetic to Rain. But the girls comfort him, telling him Arios and his party are the pathetic ones. Days later, the trio encounters Arios who mocks him and tries taking advantage of him. As Rain walks away, Arios' party realize that Rain tamed ultimate species like Tania and Kanade. 
who demand that Arios apologize to Rain for disrespecting him. Arios and his party are offended at this request and Arios insults Rain some more, calling his two companions pets. Enraged, Rain punches Arios. Arios gets edgy and challenges the trio to a duel. Canid attacks Agath and riddles him with her fast fist attacks, which Agath counterattacks with his inflamed sword, which Canid deflects easily. To Agath's surprise, Canid hasn't been using half of her strength. Agath wonders why someone so strong like Canid would serve a weakling like Rain prompting Kanade to knock him out with a single kick to the head. Meanwhile, Mino and Lian attack Tania who revokes their spells with a snap of her fingers. Their spells pale in comparison to her ultimate magical power, which horrifies the two, as they fall on their knees and beg for forgiveness. Rain takes on Arios who brags about being a hero. After Rain dodges his sword attacks and lands a punch in the guts, Arios resorts to magic attacks, which Rain blocks easily. Arios tries one final attack but his body is poisoned thanks to a bee Rain tamed during their fight, numbing Ario's body, thus shattering his massive ego. Realizing Rain's power, Ario shamefully admits defeat and begs for Rain's forgiveness. Rain decides to spare him, since revenge is an empty pursuit. After humiliating Arios and his party, Rain learns about the quest of retrieving the Shield of Truth, dwelling the deepest depths of the woods. In order to find it, Rain assimilates with a bird and tries making out a path leading to the forest. After Rain's back to his body, the trio follows the path to find a tree emitting illusionary magic. That is, a magic that casts a spell on them, making them walk in circles, meaning there's a barrier. In order to progress in their search for the Shield of Truth, the tree has to be cut down. Before Kanade can destroy it, a fairy emerges from the tree. As Rain recalls, humans haven't seen fairies in 200 years. More so, they viewed humans as their sworn enemies. Eventually, fairies retreated to the hinterlands, a place where humans can't reach them. Rain tries communicating with the fairy. Leave this place, was her response, as she intimidates them with her illusionary arrows, prompting the trio to fall back. Being a beast tamer, Rain decides to defuse the situation and talk her down, so he stands unshaken against her attack to prove that he means no harm. The fairy is a bit taken aback by Rain's courage and decides to unleash another attack. This time, the girls get mad on Rain's behalf and vouch for Rain. The fairy pulls out, introduces herself as Sora, and fetches them the shield. As the trio leaves, Rain senses Sora's unhappiness. As it turns out, Sora had a twin sister named Runa, together the two sisters built the barrier. One day, the two sisters were attacked by a C-ranked monster called the Shadow Knight who is working under the Demon King. If Sora wants her sister back, then she should remove the barrier at the Shadow Knight's request. Sora tried convincing her village leader to help her, but he tells her to turn the other cheek and abandon her sister for the good of their village. Sora is devastated and bursts out crying and hugs Rain when he tells her to rest easy and promises to save her sister. Before Rain goes beyond the barrier, Sora wishes them luck and begs them to fight well. After locating Runa's location, the trio attacks the Shadow Knight. While Rain and Kanade keep the Shadow Knight busy, Tania unties the unconscious Runa and flies away, infuriating the Shadow Knight, as he unleashes a tornado, wiping the whole forest. Rain tames a swarm of bees nearby and has it attack the knight. He also boosts Kanade's natural abilities and has her deliver the final blow, ending the Shadow Knight once and for all. Following that, Sora reunites with her sister and thanks Rain for being such a gentleman. More so, the two sisters decide to join the party and has Rain tame them, which he does. Afterward, Rain delivers the shield to Arios who thinks the shield's a fake, incredulous that Rain can pull off a mission like that in two days. After Rain takes the amount of money agreed upon, he leaves but is stopped by Agath who offers him the chance to rejoin them, promising a better pay and a better treatment and telling him to let go of the distant past. Even though this doesn't sit well with Arios, Mino and Lian are okay with it too. Nevertheless, Rain turns them down and leaves. Recalling how Rain humiliated him in their last confrontation, Arios vows to erase him. Afterwards, the sisters ask if a prick like Arios is the one destined to beat the Demon King. Rain narrates the old legend about how the Demon King brainwashed people into becoming his worshippers until the first hero forged a contract with the gods and defeated him, breaking people free. Sure Arios is weak now, but Rain thinks he'll grow limitlessly stronger. However, the girls start thinking Rain is the hero. He's grown limitlessly stronger after bonding with them. Maybe, he can defeat the Demon King. But, defeating the Demon King is never like a walk in the park, as Rain is mentally prepared for it. But he'll sleep on it. Later, Rain visits a blacksmith called Gantz, looking for a weapon and armor. Rain observes the mediocrity of the weapons, which Gantz admits with a smile since customers throw his weapons away after overusing them. Rain's observation skills astonish Gantz who then promises him to forge a special weapon. There's one problem, Gantz lacks the mithril necessary to forge the sword, and it's been depleted from the mines, which is why Rain will have to go to the mithril mine and investigate. After Rain and the girls arrive there, a bird flies above them and heads back towards the mine, Two illegal miners are seen walking out of the mines, Kanade and Tania knock them out. The fairies look into their memories, they're illegal miners and adventurers as well. Given the bird, Rain reckons there's a beast tamer leading the miners. The party walks into the mine to be attacked by the miners. Thanks to the girls, the miners are easily knocked out and captured. 
after coming face to face with the beast tamer, Rain easily beats him in a fist fight. However, a behemoth tamed by that beast tamer attacks Rain who is saved by Kanate. While Kanate holds the beast tamer, Rain successfully tames the behemoth as his own and kills it with a fireball attack. Now the mithril is retrieved and the thieves are captured. After Gantz thanks them, Rain requests a gauntlet and a dagger. Meanwhile, Arios is looking for a new beast tamer, however, he rejects all the applicants since they're not as powerful as Rain. From a drawer, he takes out a purple glowing ring and vows to kill Rain with it. Later on, Edgar, the pampered son of the corrupt mayor, demands that Rain hand him over Sora and Runa. Of course, when Rain refuses, Edgar has his knights attack. They're easily overpowered. Edgar holds some people hostage and threatens to kill them if Rain doesn't comply. Rain unleashes a dozen of fireballs on the knights, knocking them out, thus saving the hostages. While the people thank Rain, a black-cloaked Arios watches him from atop a tower, smiling sinisterly. Back at his apartment, Rain reveals some talk amongst the townspeople about Edgar's abduction and abuse of women in his mansion, which is why the group decides to expose the prince. Meanwhile, Edgar has the captain of Knight's Order, Jillet, look into Rain before a demigod girl called Nina comes in, and he starts beating her up sadistically. As Rain looks into it and informs Natalie about the matter, a group of knights approach and mock him for slandering Edgar. Later, Stella, vice-captain of the Knight, approaches them and decides to help expose the corruption of the prince and his men. After Rain receives his weapon from the blacksmith, Stella devises a plan to lure Edgar's men into the warehouse by spreading a rumor of having evidence to threaten Edgar's corruption. The plan does pay off. When night falls, Gillet and his men raid the warehouse and are ambushed by Rain. After Rain takes down Gillet's men thanks to his new weapon, Stella beats Gillet in a duel. Hearing of Gillet's arrest, Edgar is filled with anger, vents it all to Nina and conspires with Ariel's against Rain. Next, Edgar's mansion gets stormed. While Stella fights Edgar's men, Rain and the girls sneak in. Rain rescues the beat-up Nina and comforts her. On his way out, Rain and Stella run into the mayor and tie him up. Edgar uses the ring Arios gave him and unleashes a reaper that attacks Rain. Thinking that Rain is dead, Arios laughs triumphantly and goes home. But the attack turns out to be a hallucination, as Rain is still alive. The demon inside the ring possesses Edgar. As it turns out, that's the very demon that killed Rain's village and parents. The demon flies out, dead set on annihilating the city and its people. Rain and the girls try stopping him, but their attacks fail. The demon conjures an army of demons and has them attack the party. Surprisingly, the demon overpowers Kanade and Tania. As the fairy girls stab the demon, Rain boosts Kanade's and Tania's powers and has them attack. Again, their attacks fail, as the demon conjures an army of dragon demons. Meanwhile, Agath and the others ask Arios if they should be out there fighting the demons, but Arios tells them to stand down. While the fairies teleport the townspeople to a safe place, adventurers show up to the town's aid, as Gantz arms them with his swords. Rain carries Nina. Thanks to her teleportation ability, Rain successfully dodges the demon's attack, much to the demon's surprise. Rain tames all of the dragon demons and turns them against their master, thus defeating the demon, thereby saving the city. Following the epic battle, Rain bonds with Nina, adding a new member to his party. Rain decides to buy a new house. As they browse, Natalie recommends buying a haunted house, to which the party reluctantly agrees. As they walk in, they find a ghost called Tina, haunting the house. Tina tries scaring them out of the house, but Rain tames her and talks her down. After she introduces herself, she reveals she was killed 30 years ago by a sadist womanizer, thus becoming a ghost. Even though Tina wants to clear out, Rain offers her the chance to join his party and share the house. Thus, Rain has a new house and a new member to his party. Meanwhile, Arios and his party are shunned by the crowd for abandoning the city during the attack. In a final heartwarming scene, Rain enjoys his dinner with the girls, as he has a moment of silence, reflecting on his past. Rain tears up joyfully now that he has a new home and family. He's now happy and whole. All is well.